An advocate appointed by former police chief George Fivers to investigate his firm's intelligence reports for ESCOM found it contained virtually no evidence of corruption or fraud. Advocate Sarita Joubert says the intelligence reports constitute a forceful springboard from, um, springboard from which investigations into alleged irregularities at ESCOM should be launched. For more on this, we're joined by investigative journalist at the Daily Maverick, Kevin Blom, who has been following uh, the story closely. Kevin, thank you for making time for us. So wh what are the broader findings of this legal opinion by Advocate Joubert? It's, uh, thank you, Clement. It's, it's exactly what uh, you've just stated. The uh, last sentence of uh, that 12-page report confirms that the intelligence in the monthly reports, and there are 12 monthly reports, 1,500 pages, constitutes a forceful springboard from which to launch further investigations. There's an important distinction there between intelligence and evidence, and also between information. There were 348, month, uh, 348 agent information reports, which uh, in, in parts were emotional, but those were then an analyzed and elevated to the level of intelligence, which uh, the security cluster needs to turn into evidence so that criminal cases can be brought. So the legal opinion says uh, that these intelligence reports constitute that critical first step, and, and, and as you say, the investigations can follow from this. But, but has uh, George Fivers provided any of this information to the law enforcement agencies? So the, uh, a lot of uh, what has been going on, was revealed at the Scopey hearings in mid-May, where we had uh, Godfrey LeBeyer from uh, the Hawks, the head of the Hawks, Fani Masumola, the National Police Commissioner, and Andy Motibi, the head of the SIU. It emerged that SAPs have had these reports since July last year, that the Hawks have been aware of them and have had aspects of them, even though LeBeyer tried to deny knowledge, and that the SIU didn't have them. What we know now is that the SIU have been handed all of the monthly reports, as well as all of the uh, uh, agent um, reports as well. So they have everything now. And, and was that provided to them by George Fivers himself? Indeed it was. Okay. Indeed it was. All right, and the, the intelligence gathering operation, is it still ongoing or is that work done? It's, it's not ongoing, unfortunately, Clement. Uh, the reason was there in, in, in late April, on the 26th of April, just before Andre de Reta was due to appear before Scopa, News 24 released a series of reports that claimed that all of the intelligence was worthless and uh, named one or two of, of, of the operatives involved which we believe at Daily Maverick uh, endangered their lives. These uh, criminal syndicates that we have been investigating with our own sources, we have journalists on the ground, we have a range of sources independent of uh, George Fivers and independent of those reports, we are pretty confident that the names of the criminal cartels mentioned is exactly who they are, and that the spate of assassinations that, we're, that, that we've been seeing around the power stations would place the lives of those uh, operatives at risk, mm -hmm. and therefore the operation has, has gone to ground. Yeah. Was it News24, though, that suggested um, that there's not much value on the information that was gathered through this program? Or, or was it George Fivers who confirmed to Jacques Paul that, and I quote here, our intelligence contains many untested information. This is raw information. None or very little of the information um, subject, was subject of a proper investigation. And, and, and I remember at the time the concern was around how the former CEO of ESCOM, under the Rater, was positioning this information as though um, there's evidence around it, when in fact it's just information that, you know, a lot of work still needs to be done to investigate. You, I imagine, spoke to George Fivers yourself. 
what is he telling you about the value of the information that was collated? Does he still believe um, it's untested information? So, so Clement, I, I, I do not want to uh, get into a war of words with News 24. I can only speak for what Daily Maverick understands. And again, it's, it's intelligence. And it's intelligence that points to a pattern of racketeering activity that would fall under the Prevention of Organized Crimes Act, which uh, was, was specifically passed to deal with aspects like this. Now, it's, it's notoriously difficult to bring the kingpins of uh, organized crime of criminal syndicates to book. I draw your attention to the most famous of all cases from the 20th century, where Al Capone himself uh, was um, imprisoned on tax fraud, and, and not necessarily for the racketeering that he was involved in. So we have confirmed, again, on the ground, that a lot of the information and a lot of the intelligence in those reports stands up. We don't have any evidence yet. And uh, one of the reasons we haven't been able to get close to the documentary evidence is because during the uh, state capture years, during the, you know, the, the, the Gupta Zuma years, and everything that came out of the Zondo Commission confirms this, ESCOM, as well as a number of other SOEs, were gutted. Mm -hmm. And we're now looking at stage two there, which means that our ability to get hold of the procurement documents, which we would need to get to through ESCOM's IT systems, has been compromised as well. Mm -hmm. And I don't think this is news to anyone. In order to bring this to the level of evidence, we would need subpoena powers, which Daily Maverick doesn't have, which the SIU does, so that bank records could be attached. And so the actual procurement documents that ESCOM has uh, would, would be given to law enforcement authorities. At Daily Maverick, the most we can do is hire ESCOM. We can use the Protection of, Ac uh, of, uh, of, of Access to Information Act, which we have been doing. But it's a long and laborious process, and we don't always get what we need. And, and, and that's the position we're in. What about the people that were hired to be part of this, this, this intelligence gathering um, program? George Fiver spoke about Tony um, Osthazen, who's a former apartheid agent. And, and when he spoke to News24, he said in hindsight, um, it was a mistake to appoint Osthazen. But when I was reading your article, he doesn't seem to... Um, you know, sort of regret that decision. Um, from the conversation you had with him, does he regret hiring him or not? Clement, uh, I, I can't comment on what other journalists have uh, said or, or what Fibers has said to other journalists. I can uh, honestly only comment on, on, on my own interactions with George Fibers, and there were six handlers. Uh, Tony Ostazen was one of them. Those six handlers were running 40 agents in the field who were operatives around the power stations who were gathering information at the time, raw information, from people who were either close to or who, or who were working inside of those criminal syndicates. So they had been turned to give information, and uh, that information was swapped for money. Now, there were six handlers. We're dealing in a very murky world when we're dealing with intelligence gathering operations and specifically in this country. Uh, we know that a lot of the operatives that work for the apartheid state carried on working for President Nelson Mandela. And that was part of his uh, drive to ensure that uh, post-democratic um, South Africa retained its in institutional memory. Uh, at Daily Maverick, we're not condoning any alleged acts by former apartheid operatives. But again, I can't comment on what was or wasn't said to journalists from other organizations. Yeah, what I'm, what I'm asking is, what did he say to you? I'm just referencing what he said in the past so the viewers get the context. Because in the past, News24 
um, quoted him as saying, in hindsight, I think it was a mistake to appoint Urs Tazen to lead this program. When you had a conversation with him, was he comfortable with the appointment of Urs Tazen? I did not ask him that question, Clement. Uh, it wasn't my question to ask. We are, what, what we're looking at at Daily Maverick is in the current. We're, we're looking at that intelligence. We're looking if it can be turned into evidence. And we're also paying close attention to the fact that all of these operatives, and not just one of them, uh, are operating in environments that is incredibly risky and incredibly dangerous. Mm. Did the, the legal opinion also comment on what George Fiverr said to, uh, was it business leadership South Africa, when, when they were requesting them to, to fund this intelligence gathering operation? Because uh, at the time he had written in an email to BLSA um, that there was in fact a plan to collapse ESCOM and that Russia um, wanted to make a case for a lucrative nuclear deal, and it was behind, for instance, the sabotage at ESCOM. Um, and from what we have heard from George Fivers, from what he said to the other journalists in the past, was that, in fact, there was no evidence whatsoever that suggests that Russia was behind the sabotage at ESCOM. Um, when you were looking at this legal opinion, d did it say whether or not, in fact, um, there was you know, something to look into when it comes to this claim that was made around Russia's involvement? There was no mention of uh, Russia, uh, Clements, and again, that's uh, another news organization's reporting. I have no way of, of verifying or confirming any conversations that happened between uh, Jacques Poe and George Fivers. I just have no way. What I do know, and, and what we know at Daily Maverick, is is that there is uh, a very strong um, suggest there were very strong suggestions of a political destabilization campaign leading up to Nazrek. And uh, although we didn't have the evidence to prove it, there were specific days and specific instances and uh, clear sabotage. Uh, acts of sabotage performed on power stations that uh, seem to have a political motive behind it. I can't comment on Russia. It, it's not a story that we were involved in. Uh, Kevin Blum, Daily Maverick journalist, thank you for making time for us.